New American Voting System. How do we find the best people to represent us? Professional hucksters. Brandon Gentile here. Savvy political leaders like Barack Obama hire p people like healthcare czar Jonathan Gruber to carry out their dirty work. Gruber, who admittedly uses the lack of transparency, quote unquote, to shroud their intentions. They use the, quote, stupidity of the American voter, unquote, to pass through their boondoggles. This is evident in YouTube videos that we will share here as well from 10, 12 years ago. How do we know our leaders are representing us? We purposely vote for the people to do the work because we don't have time to do it ourselves. A representative republic, federal republic. Democracy is a term that's thrown around all the time. However, we have a republic. This right here is the first problem we have as a nation. We don't even understand what type of government we have. We have a representative federal constitutional republic. I mean, when was the last time you read one of the spending bills? When was the last time one of the politicians read the spending bills? Or any of the bills for that matter? Tax bills? Infrastructure bills? The Ukraine spending bills? Bill? Bills? Bet you didn't know that the latest Ukraine bill can let the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, change the citizenship of foreign nationals coming into America. Yes, here in America. A new system. Our leaders have obviously failed us. Congress's approval rating is consistently in the single digits, yet vast majority of them continue to get elected over and over again. Dan Lammer has a new system, I would suggest, that may work better to vote for our politicians. I have always advocated for publicly, I've always advocated publicly for finding the right people to advise you and be on your team. So you don't have to be an expert in everything. Business is a team sport, as Robert Kiyosaki constantly reminds us. The country is its own business. If we can pick better leaders, then it should take care and clean up much of the BS that flows downstream. Like the spending boondoggles and the politicians just heading to Washington to enrich themselves. Dan Crenshaw and Nancy Pelosi on line three. Or, as some say, like one of my good mentors, Gregory Manorino or Gerald Salente, if your vote mattered, you wouldn't have a vote. This is why the debacles of 2020 can happen and we can have dead people voting for decades and we can have consistent, terrible, terrible approval ratings for Congress and people across the board, yet they continue to get reelected. Why is that? Does anyone sit back for a second to ask the question, why is that? Why? 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 How? How? It's because if your vote mattered, you wouldn't have a vote. Again, here's the members of Congress showing Dan Crenshaw and Nancy Pelosi in the top five, top six of people profiting off of their position in government. And again, being on the inside is okay. Being an inside investor, as we talk about a lot here, being a real estate investor, owning gold, silver, Bitcoin, being an insider, owning it, having no counterparty risk, that is wonderful. You control the transaction. Just know that your politicians are doing that as well. They are the ones playing you. You don't have control. You have no control of your 401k, over your pension. None whatsoever. They have control. Personal accountability. If we had a way that involved everyone, and that was... It was your public duty to potentially serve and be a part of the process. I could almost guarantee we would have better leaders that would give us only a small fraction of the problems we face now. Here's how the system works. As Dan Lammer points out in his book, More Equal Animals, The Subtle Art of True Democracy, you start with groups of 10 people throughout the country of age. Each group votes on a winner and after interviewing and talking to people in said group. The winner of that group moves on. The groom shrinks down each time in groups of 10. Until you get to the last couple hundred, even last couple thousand people or so, you easily have people who could run the nation and the other top roles like cabinets, etc. Bitcoin fixes this. Again? What if all political contributions had to run through an immutable ledger? What if the whole thing had to be open source? What if the average person could be part of the actual process? What if the entire thing could be done from people's phones? What if we knew each person and who they were because they had to pay sats, satoshis, just to verify their existence? Just like we could clean up Twitter and YouTube and these other platforms from all the spam by creating people that need to pay just a little bit in order to verify their existence. That way, 
It was free to vote, but you had to verify your identity on an immutable, open-source, decentralized ledger that no one owns. No Dominion voting sh machines or Zuck Facebook ballot drop boxes in the middle of the night or vote dumps in the middle of the night or ID issues. None at all. They are just simple answers to nearly all of life issues, especially politically. They really are. However, we as people choose to continue taking the hard route. When people say, stay silent, evil persists. We've known this for ages. Until good people start standing, there will be more chaos. I can guarantee it. Not because I'm Nostradamus, but because history is clear and gives us a roadmap. As Winston Churchill said, the further we look back in history, the further we can see into the future. What would you do to change the voting and ensure fair and safe elections that clean up our lives and restore freedom and prosperity? Besides voter ID and not letting non-citizens vote, you know, the obvious things. This is a systemic problem, a problem that is clear as day, and we are obviously doing things that directly affect our country in a negative and harmful way. Yet we continue to go down that road in the name of inclusiveness, equality, wokeness. When in reality, all they're doing is making everyone equally poor, equally, equally saddled by taxes, equally saddled by bureaucracy, equally saddled by red tape, equally saddled by inflation. Deflation is true, the true key to wealth. A deflationary money, one that can't be manipulated and controlled by bankers. We have the separation of church and state. It's time for separation of money and state. We need to get out of the business of lauding the U.S. dollar as a warhead around the world and beating people over the head with it. It's time to stand strong, stand firm, firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, as they say in the Declaration. We hold these truths to be self-evident with firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, our sacred honors. This is for our children, for our grandchildren, and their children's children. It's not about us. That may be one of the problems we are facing right now, is that too many people, too many of us, maybe it's me, thinking this is all about us. I'm the center of the universe. The world revolves around me. The earth revolves around me. The sun, the universe, the solar system revolves around me. The pale blue dot, Carl Sagan. Please go watch that video. It's an incredible video. We realize we are not only not the center of the universe, but the earth is just a tiny speck of dust in the universe. We are nothing. There are things much bigger at play than we are. It's time we act like adults and grow up. If you appreciate this content, please share it. Like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to our blog. Please dislike. Give negative comments if you wish if, so we can better improve what we are doing. We really, really appreciate your engagement and your thoughts and your opinions. Dialogue, good dialogue and debate is the only thing that's going to move us forward and truly create a world worth living in. I appreciate you, your time, your energy. It's the most important thing we have. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.